Next comic coming up is a good friend of mine. Her name is Kat Leth. Welcome to the stage, everybody. Hi, Kat Vidian. Everyone's still awake out there. I'm gonna try my best, I hear you. Um, so, the general agreement among folks, you know, guys, it's a big thing, guys are like, oh, you know, yeah, I can pee anywhere. You know, and girls are like, oh, guys can pee everywhere. I'm so jealous of that. And I would just like to come to the stand with a rebuttal while I have a microphone and say that peeing anywhere is cool, and I get that, but girls can come anywhere, which is significantly more pleasurable. <laughs> And it's probably a lot worse than you think. Uh, you know, it's probably, maybe you haven't even thought about that. But yeah, girls can basically rub one out anywhere and you won't even know. So uh, if you've ever suspected, they were. You must believe it. Like, if, if you guys probably aren't old enough to have kids, but... All I want to say is, like, little boys, like, discover jerking off. Little girls do that, too. People just don't talk about it, and it's fucking weird. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's, like, it's like gay people. It's, like, another thing that people don't talk about. Like, if you live in an environment where you're, like, kind of weirded out by gay people, and you think that dudes aren't, like, fucking all around you, wake up, because gay people are everywhere, and they're fucking in your dressing rooms, like... <laughs> We all know Uncle Kenny. You're like, oh, he's just a real friendly guy. No, Uncle Kenny's taking it in the ass after Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> like, don't kid yourself. Like, really, it's okay. It's great. They're everywhere. <laughs> I was driving through downtown the other day, and I noticed that on one of the big skyscrapers downtown, there was a, a Wells Fargo sign. And that, that brought me back to about a year ago, I guess it was, um, in Richmond when all the Wachovias turned into Wells Fargo's, uh, Wells Fargo? Um, <laughs> is it like in the family of fungus? I think it should be. <laughs> um, no, but I, and I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, that's a huge sign. And I remember when the news article came out and they were like, you know, Wells Fargo has bought out Wachovia, you know, Wachovia customers are gonna become like Wells Fargo, blah, blah, blah. But, and, and nothing happened for like a year. Like we all heard the news, you know, we're like on the internet, on our phones, I don't know why I'm doing this motion. The internet happens, you know. Anyway, and then one day I'm like driving down Broad Street and all of a sudden, all the Wachovias are Wells Fargo. Like it happened fucking overnight. Like, I don't know if anyone else had this experience, but I just imagine, like, a bunker, like, two miles under Richmond, and there's, like, men with, like, ladders and, like, ninja suits, and they're, like, ready to go and do, like, this, like, bank sign adjustment blitzkrieg overnight, like, change every sign in Richmond, like, quickly fucking, because there was no thing that was, like, oh, here's the workers, like, changing the signs, like, no, we were all dead asleep, and, like, Fucking, they unleashed a squadron of like ninja sign changers to fucking convert Richmond to Wells Fargo. I was like waiting anxiously for some like big Wall Street banker dude to be like, all right, it's time, go do it now, take over. And that really sucks. That sucks that there's like the whole Wall Street banker like stereotype, like asshole image thing. Like, it really sucks that the people in control of the money had to be the big dick bags. Like, it sucks that money is the one thing that makes you really greedy because, it, I mean, if it was something different, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Like, if it was, like, asparagus farmers or, like, something, like, we could deal with it. It'd be like, oh, you know, they're just being real big dicks, like, hoarding all the asparagus and, you know. You'd just be, like, a little bit irritated, but it's like, really? Like, don't fuck with my money, dog. Like, <laughs> don't make me come to your house. Like, fuck. Like, even if it was something slightly more important than asparagus, like, I don't know, toilet seats or something, like, they're, like, hoarding all of them, like, green, you know, just, like, crazy, like, fucking doggy dog, like, it just sucks, so that's, like, the one thing, because that's, like, the one thing that means the most, you know? Um, <laughs> I saw a guy wearing a life alert necklace out in public the other day, and it really just kind of fucked up my whole universe, 
because I was under the impression that they only work in the home, like an electric fence or something, like for your dog. <laughs> like a, an old person life-saving electric fence for your house. <laughs> and so I see this old man wearing it and my imagination immediately is like springs into a universe of possibilities. And I'm like, okay, is this like a restaurant pager type of like sonar or is it like a fucking like Jurassic Park GPS global satellite that you can just like wear out into the world and like anywhere you press it, like a fucking ambulance will come and like help you out. Because if that's the case, like next time I board a flight, I'm gonna be eyeing grandpa two rows up. You know, if my plane goes down, I will rip that thing off of your beheaded body. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I'm soulless like that. Um, anyway, I was at work last week, and it's real quiet in our office, and we have a little, like, white noise machine that just kind of, like, <sighs> I see you, Clay. Um, we have a little white noise machine that's, like, <sighs> and it just, like, kind of makes a noise so it's easier for us to work. And one day, I was hearing birds. I was, like, sitting down working, and I was like, oh, I hear birds. Like, that's weird. They must have, like, added that to the white noise machine. And it was, like, kind of driving me crazy. And so I eventually said something to my coworkers. I was like, did they, like, add, like, a like a bird setting to the white noise machine? Because it's, like, it's weirding me out. And my coworkers were like, cat, no. Like, there are birds, like, out in the world, like, being wild animals. Like, your <laughs> birds are chirping, like, around the workplace. Like... <laughs> It's not, and it, that just blew my mind, and I felt pathetic afterwards. <laughs> felt like a real product of the 21st century there. <laughs> anyway, whatever. That's my time. I'm Kat Leth. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Kat Leth, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, everyone, if you're not paying attention for anything else, pay attention for this. It's time for me to make announcements. Saturday, August 18th, be sure to catch Todd Berry and Neil Hamburger at Gallery 5. There's a 7 p.m. show, a 10 p.m. show. Uh, it's $20 in advance. Check it out. It's by Hit Play Productions. Again, that's at Gallery 5, August 18th, bit.ly slash haha RVA for all you internet kids out there. If anyone needs to catch that, there's more in the back. On the in the corner, um, I fuck it. Oh, I know who's coming up next. This next person, uh, relative newcomer to the Richmond comedy scene. I think he's hilarious. I would love to see him come out to more of the mics. I hope that he sticks with it. Please give a warm welcome to my friend Austin Hanna. Hello, everybody. Hey! What's up? How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Yeah, that's cool. So, do you guys like fast food? You guys, you guys, you guys know this stuff, fast food? You guys hear about fast food? Let me tell you something about fast food. Uh, so my favorite fast food restaurant, and I go here almost daily, is the KFC Taco Bell Combo. And I think... If there's nothing we can learn from the KFC Taco Bell combo, it's that that September 11th was unsuccessful. Because <laughs> there is no... Like, that, that is a product of a free world. Like, that's like the best minds coming together. That's capitalism at work. So good try. Good try, Alcada. I'm still, still drinking Baja Blast and eating my famous bowls. Um, but my favorite part about... This is kind of super pathetic. My favorite part about the drive through is when they tell you to pull up. They're like, hey, we just cannot possibly handle this order right now. Could you please drive forward and park so we can get the other customers out of here before we have to just like deep fry all the food you just ordered? But my favorite, uh, my favorite fast food restaurant is McDonald's. And uh, I love McDonald's, I love the food, but I don't know if you guys noticed this. Maybe it's just me, maybe they have a vendetta against me, but when I go to McDonald's, it looks like somebody just tossed a grenade inside my bag. Like, when I get it, like, there's, like, one guy at McDonald's whose job it is to just take my fries and turn them upside down. <laughs> like, that's just, like, in the order of things at McDonald's, some guy's like, right? <laughs> good, very good. 
<laughs> and then there's some other guy who's just going crazy with the lettuce. Like, I don't know if you, like, anytime you, like, get something at McDonald's, there's always just random lettuce everywhere. Like, not even, like, outside the box, like, on the bottom of the bag, some guy's just like, lettuce! Just, like, just, like screaming, throwing lettuce everywhere. And that probably doesn't happen. Um, let's see. Oh, here's some new joke. So, let's change topics absolutely 100% completely and talk about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, do you think, like, when Abraham Lincoln was giving the Gettysburg Address and he started out and he was like, four score and seven years ago, one guy in the crowd had to be like, we have to do math right now? Like, this is kind of important. <laughs> like, maybe, like, some guy's like, so score, it's like, four <laughs> Like, adding it up. Like, why, like, Abraham just been like, 87 years ago, like, they just would cut the crap, nobody would have been doing fucking, like, arithmetic. That's my, that's a dumb Abraham Lincoln impression. 87 years ago. My grandfather's <laughs> uh, So, uh... This might not be funny, but I saw a headline the other day that said, Great White Shark... No, Great White Blamed in Shark Attack. And I'm all for, like, you know, innocence until proven guilty. Due process of law, but it seems like a pretty open and shut case, right? Like, if everybody involved in the attack, I'd say the shark's probably, he probably had the most to gain. <laughs> I don't think we could hold him, we could hold him accountable. Nah, who cares? <laughs> uh, Alright, fuck those new jokes. I heard, I read a story about a guy who tried to commit suicide, he shot himself in the head with a nail gun, and he shot four nails into his head. And in case you're wondering, that's exactly the amount of nails it takes to figure out that you are hurt and you need to go to the doctor. Because <laughs> he didn't succeed, he wasn't like, I'm going to persevere, like, like 20 nails in. Like, he was like, all right, four nails, good enough. I didn't win this one. Like a nail gun, like that's so inconvenient. Like, why don't you use a real gun? Like, nail guns plug into the wall, you know, like, down your knees and shit. <laughs> um, and the saddest part about it is that the guy who went blind and one, here's some funny shit about blind people. One funny thing about blind people is that when you go blind, the, the first thing the doctor does is just put sunglasses on your face. As if that helps anything. Like, that's like, here's the cure. <laughs> it's really like, and the sad part is it's just because we don't want to see blind people's fucked up eyes. Like, that's the whole reasoning behind it. Like, oh, you're blind and your eyes are kind of weird, so you should wear these things so nobody gets scared. Like, you should at least, like, lie to them and be like, yeah, lasers coming in your eyes, dude. It's, uh, you're destroying things like buildings are collapsing. Um, so, are, uh, are rape whistles a, a real thing? Does anybody have a rape whistle? Can you blow it? Blow it right now if you have one. Hell yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that totally would not stop a rape ever. Like, what's that, like, oh, what's that fate whistling? <laughs> like, because when I hear a whistle, I just think of, like, a, a soccer game or, like, a child's, like, referee. Just like, like, no, I never hear a whistle and think, I better go check that out. That sounds like an important whistle. Like, you should just yell, I'm getting raped! <laughs> um, all right. Uh, do you guys watch Cops? Yeah. Show Cops? Hell yeah. Who doesn't? It's an American institution. God bless. Uh, I love Cops. And one thing I've learned from Cops is that almost never are you accused of being a prostitute and it's wrong. If somebody calls you a prostitute, you are, you are a prostitute. <laughs> like, there's no two ways about it. Because when somebody says, are you a prostitute, there's two responses. First one is, yeah, I'm a prostitute. The second one is, what? That's, that's like all you can say. If somebody's ever like, you prostitute and you weren't, you would be like, holy shit. Like, that's so insulting. Like, how much footage do you think cops have of women that are like being confronted and they're like, excuse me? And they just like turn off like... <laughs> all right. I'm Austin Hanna. That's my time. Thank you very much. Austin Hanna, everybody. Give it up for him again. Oh shit. We're getting we're getting we're getting pretty far in the list now. Uh this next comic coming to the stage, um it's good to see him come out again. Roy, it's good it's good to see you come out again. He's an awesome guy, I love watching him perform. Everybody, give it up for Roy Rogers! Let's see. Uh come out to the stage next. One of my favorite people. They're very funny. The very lovely 
Miss Mikkel Kettner. Uh, this next person, <laughs> God damn it. This next person coming to the stage is uh, one of my favorite Richmond comics. If you have not seen him before, shut the fuck up. Ignore that stupid conversation you're having at the bar. Calm it for five minutes. Watch this guy. I love him. He's going to hate me for introducing him like that, but I don't care. He's awesome. Sean Warely, everybody. Give it up for him. Let's see. Who's up next? Oh, man. This man. One of my good friends. Becoming better friends every day. He's a very funny man. He's a very large man. He's a very awesome man. His name is Tony Chapman. I also like Mikhail Cutter, I don't like going on this late because I've drank way too much. How's everybody doing tonight? Woo! Fuck yeah. Um, I'm from a little resort town known as Petersburg, Virginia. <laughs> Great place, right? Um, and what I don't have in common with a lot of people from Petersburg is um, I actually have a college degree. Um, but what I do have in common with a lot of people from Petersburg is um, I do have a couple of criminal charges. Um, one of those being indecent exposure. Yeah. I got this in college. Let me tell you, if you have never gotten charged for anything while in college, you have not fucking went to college. That's just clear there. But yeah, so um, it was indecent exposure. It was one night, drunken night, bender, college bender. Um, I had to piss really bad. So we were in the Taco Bell drive thru and I was like, God, I have to piss. So I saw this building, it was a dark enclosure, ran right into it and just let it loose and started pissing. Um, what I didn't realize is that I was actually pissing into an open window of a sleeping college student and pissing directly on his laptop computer. Yeah. I just saw sparks and everything. I thought the police were shooting at me. And, man, it, was, it turned out to be a really bad incident. <sighs> More about Petersburg. Um, I went to a funeral a couple months ago. My, one of my neighbors passed away. And he was, oh, excuse me, she was cremated. And one thing that <laughs> didn't sit well with me at the funeral, um, the pastor, he started talking, and as he was talking, he started pouring the ashes of the deceased into her husband's hands. And without warning, he threw the ashes into the air like it was some fucking cryptic LeBron James. <laughs> they paused just for a moment as Jesus smiled down on all of us and the ashes careened down on every single person at this funeral. I am telling the God-awful truth, people, this happened. Um, needless to say, everybody there left with a piece of our neighbor on us, <laughs> in us. I inhaled like a big wad of my neighbor. And that was the first time I ever wanted someone to die of a coke overdose. I'll let it know right um, Look, Petersburg, is, it's a really small area. It's, it's, it's one of the biggest places in Petersburg that people like to hang out is the Wendy's. And I used to fucking love Wendy's. I loved it a lot until they started this new ad campaign with the real true-to-life Wendy Thomas. And here I am expecting all of my life, oh my God, real life Winnie Thomas, Emma Stone, Christina Hendricks. I get fucking Ginger Rosie O'Donnell. It just fucked up my entire perception of Wendy's. I, I, oh God, I just want to throw up now. And speaking of fucked up marketing, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll preface it with this. Um, I am a very large homosexual, which, which knocked it out of the way. Yeah. Thanks for the claps. Actually, actually, those weren't claps. Those are the buttholes of every straight guy in here snapping shut. <laughs> like a fucking alligator snapping turtle. <laughs> you can't lock those buttholes tight enough, guys. But I went to a black gay pride rally in D.C. Yeah, black gay pride. And it's pretty annoying because, I mean, you're either always pissed off about something or... You're always pissed on about something. 
And they were like, well, yeah, we want rights. And I'm like, yeah, rights, equal rights, gay marriage, yeah. And so, you know, I just started raising my fist, like, yeah, fuck yeah, we want all these things. And um, that's when I noticed the crowd grew silent and exponentially more raunchy. And that's when I realized that the black power fist means something completely different than a black gay pride rally. <laughs> Sham it right on in there. <laughs> but it, it's, it's kind of amazing what gay guys are sticking their asses these days, right? Am I right? No. Yep. Just fucking together. Um, first, gerbils, now Chick fil A sandwiches. Um, in protest, of course. But um, now Chick fil A, they're talking about coming out with a new line of sandwiches. They have the first one, it's called the flame broiled sandwich and it's, it's not what you think um this sandwich is actually made over the flame of burning corpses of homosexuals um and then they also have the tossed chicken salad sandwich which is not as popular because i mean you're just eating that out of some gay guy's ass oh yeah um it's not all Okay, I'll tell you about this incident. Um, I had a really, really bad coming out experience. One of my friends, I came out to him and he didn't take it that well. I mean, it's, it's not all rainbows and sparkles being gay people. Okay, it is all sparkles and fucking rainbows, but listen. Okay, so I came out to him and I was like, gotcha. I came out to him and I was like, hey, I'm gay, man. He was like, oh, really? You're gay? Why don't you go take it up the fucking ass, faggot? I was like, ouch, that hurt. <laughs> Mainly him because I'm six foot five, two hundred and sixty-five fucking pounds, and I fucked his ass up. But no, no, I was like, this is a teachable moment. So let me go and calmly take him outside and explain to him that not all gay guys take it up the ass. Then I raped him. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> what? He was dressed slutty. I mentioned mean, somebody mentioned an It Gets Well video. Get, what is it? It Gets Better? It gets, yeah. yeah, It Gets Better. Um, the last time I heard him, he was actually making an It Gets Better video for anal trauma victims. <laughs> I think my last joke just creeped y'all the fuck out. <laughs> it's like an episode of Oz. <laughs> and here's my bitch coming back to the stage, Mr. Clay Show! <laughs> Anthony Chapman, everyone.